So in the last video we left off having created the DNS header that we're going to send in a response. In this video we're going to start creating the DNS body which is the bottom half of the response that we're going to send back to the client. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do instead of printing out the DNS header is we want to create a new variable called DNS body. So we're going to say DNS body is equal to a string of bytes. Then what we do is we call our get recs function up here and we're going to create three variables. The first one's going to be records then we have rec type and then finally we have domain name and that's going to be equal to the return value of the get recs function and we're going to pass the get recs method data and then we're going to start on the 12th byte and we're just going to send it the rest of that string. The reason we're starting on the 12th byte is because the DNS header is 12 bytes long so the data we need to send it starts after the 12th byte. So next what we need to do is we need to create the DNS question because if we go back here you can see that this is a DNS response and straight after the header the first thing we see is the DNS query is sent again. So we need to create the question. So to do that what we do is we create a variable called DNS question and it's going to be equal to build question and the only thing we need to do is we need to send it the domain name and the rec type and we got these from the get recs method up here. What we need to do now is go up and create this method so we say def build question and we pass it domain name and rec type and all this method needs to do is actually just convert these strings into bytes. So first what we need to do is create a variable called qbytes and it's going to be equal to an empty string of bytes and that's the string that we're going to return whenever we've converted everything the domain name and the record type into bytes. Then what we do is we say for part in domain name because domain name if you'll remember came from the get recs method which got it from the get question domain method and uh, that method returned domain parts which was a list containing all of the items in the domain. So the first thing we need to do is get the length of the part of the domain name because if we just pick howcode.org for example as our test case the first time domain name will contain two items it'll contain howcode and it'll contain a second item called org and if we go back here you can see that the first byte of the question is the length of the first label so we need to get the length of the first label here so we simply do that by saying length is equal to len part then what we do is we append it onto qbytes we set qbytes plus equals bytes which is python's built-in function that converts something to a byte then we just need to put in length but we need to put it into a list and here we'll just print out qbytes and you can see if we run that we get the list qbytes the first item is a byte which is just the number seven which is the length of howco.org because that's the domain we sent then the second item is org which is a length of three and the third one is just zero because there isn't actually a length for the next item. So now that we have the length of the label we want to say for char in part because we want to get each individual character and what we want to do is just convert every single char into a byte. So we do that by saying qbytes because we want to append it onto qbytes afterwards is equal to ord which just converts ASCII characters into uh, decimal numbers in Python. We want to say ord char dot two bytes we want to create one byte and we want to set the byte order equal to big. It doesn't actually matter because we're only using one byte. And then down here once more we'll print Q bytes. And we just need to append that rather than assign it. And you can see now what we've got is the length of high code, then we have the word high code, then we have the length of org, then we have org. These are all individual bytes, but as usual the terminal is converting the ASCII bytes into their actual character representations. The next thing we need to do is convert the record type into a byte. So we say if rec type equals A qbytes plus equals one dot two bytes one byte and we'll set the byte order to big because once again it doesn't matter because we're uh, only sending one byte so that's the record type finally if we go back to the text file you can see we have record type in green which is the a type then we have class of in which is internet and every dns query is pretty much always in for internet so we're just going to set qbytes once more plus equals one dot two bytes one byte order equals big because the internet class in DNS is encoded as a one. Then finally we'll just return qbytes and we'll just print out DNS question here. So there we can see we have first our string which is hyco.org and we have two bytes of one. The reason we have them is because we have these in our for loop. We just need to take the record type out and take the second one out as well. Run it one more time. We have hyco.org that's the string and then we have zero zero 
which is the zero byte, which tells DNS that the string is over. We need a byte of zero and a byte of one. And whoops, we just need to change this to two bytes and we wanna create two bytes as well. Because according to the DNS protocol, the type and the class are both stored in two bytes. So we'll just run that one more time. And you can see now we have the string, we have the zero byte that just tells the DNS server that's the end of the string. We have our DNS type, which is two bytes, and then we have our class, which is two bytes as well. We're gonna go down here, and instead of printing out the DNS question, we're gonna say for record in records, because we get records from get racks up here. And what we wanna do is we wanna say DNS body plus equals a new method we're gonna create called rack two bytes, which just converts the record into bytes, just like the build question method did. We wanna pass it the domain name, the record type. We wanna get the record TTL, which is the time to live. And we wanna get the record value. So obviously we have to go up here and we have to create this method. So we say def rack two bytes. We pass it domain name, rack type, rack TTL and rack value. The first thing we wanna do is just create a variable called R bytes, set it equal to an empty string of bytes, just like we did up here with Q bytes. And if we go over here, you can see we have this C00C again. That's the DNS compression. And I already went over that in an earlier video. So I'll put an annotation on the screen and you can go back and watch that again if you need to. But for simplicity, we're going to keep this as C00C in all of our responses because we're only going to be focusing on really simple DNS responses. We're not going to be worrying about advanced queries at this point. So we can put that into our string of bytes. Instead of creating an empty string of bytes, we can put in our two bytes here. So essentially the way that works is we say slash x to tell Python it's a byte. We say C0 and we do slash x again and we say 0C and now we have two bytes of our response. And those are the first two bytes that come uh, right before we actually start sending the records back. And those two bytes represent the DNS name of whatever was requested. So for example, howco.org, this C00C represents the compressed version of that. So next what we wanna do is we wanna say, if rec type equals A, then we'll say our bytes equals our bytes plus bytes zero, because essentially what we're doing is getting the number zero, turning it into a list and converting that into bytes. And that will give us bytes that are slash x zero zero, that'll give us a zero byte. Sort of the same as this method up here, it's just a lot simpler. And then we just wanna append one more time, we'll say bytes one. And that's essentially just gonna give us a slash x zero one byte. The reason we're converting it into a list it just has to do with the way Python handles lists internally in Python three. I haven't tested this in Python two, but Python two and Python three handle lists differently. So if it doesn't work, you'll have to use the two bytes method if you're using Python two. But there's our A record represented as two bytes, a zero byte and a one byte. Then once again, we have the class, we say our bytes is equal to itself plus a zero byte and a one byte. Then we get the TTL, so we say our bytes plus equals rec TTL. But rec TTL isn't actually a number yet, so we need to convert it to an integer, and that will allow us to convert it to bytes. So we say two bytes, and we want to create four bytes, and once again, our byte order will be big. The reason we're creating four bytes is because that's how many bytes the TTL is stored in in a DNS response. Next, we want to get the value out of the record, and different records need to be treated differently. So once again, we need to say if rec type is equal to A for an A record. But before we do that, we want to go back here to the RFC, and you can see here, after the TTL, which is two bytes, we have the record length, which is another two bytes, and then we have the record data. An A record stores an IPv4 IP address, and if we just create a new file, we'll say 127.0.0.1. Each one of these numbers is stored in a one byte number. That's why the maximum IPv4 address possible is 255.255.255.255. Because each byte can store 256 different values and each one of these is stored in one byte. So that means we need four bytes. So if we go back to Google Chrome, you can see the record length for an A record has to be four bytes. But that itself is stored in two bytes. So the way we do that is we say R bytes equals R bytes plus, and we want to create a zero byte and a byte that says the number four because the data is stored in four bytes, but the the length of the uh, data is stored in two bytes. After we have the record length, we need to get the data, and that is the data we extract from the zone file. If we go back here, we can just close that. We can see this is how it's stored in the zone file, and we need to split this up based on the dots to get the individual parts of the IPv4 address. So the way we do that is we say for part in rec val dot split, because we want to split it 
based on the uh, dots to create a list and we want to loop through that list with the for loop we want to say our bytes plus equals bytes which is python's byte method uh, and then we want to pass it a list once more because of the way that python handles lists then we want to say int part because the number itself is a string at the moment then we convert it to an integer we convert that integer to a list and then the bytes method uses that list to actually convert it into bytes so that should be it and then we just say return our bytes so finally, what we need to do is go down here and we simply say return DNS header plus DNS question plus DNS body. So let's just run this and hopefully it'll work. And there we go. The uh, We'll just close the server. But as you can see, we got this response from our DNS server. You can see the values returned. There are four A records. If we go back to our zone file, you can see I have four A records in here. If I create another record, a fifth one, And let's just call this one, for example, 10.10.10.10. We run this one more time. You can see we got 10.10.10.10 returned to us. So you can see this is coming from our local server. So you can see this is coming from our local server and we can see that because we have the at sign and then we have 127.0.0.1, which is just my local computer. If I delete that and actually get the live records from hyco.org, you can see we get completely different results because these are the IP addresses. This, these are actually Cloudflare IP addresses because high code is hosted behind Cloudflare. But you can see these results are completely different from the re local results we got from our local DNS server, which shows us our DNS server works and it's sending back responses that are formatted correctly that means dig can can interpret them and we can also see that our responses are returned in one millisecond because they are local responses you can see if we get the live responses it's about 43 milliseconds so i'll just go into wireshark and i'm on the loopback which is essentially just my local computer and i'm going to run this one more time whoops i should have run the server first so there's the first uh, query so here's the actual query that we sent here is the response. This is the response we sent back and it matches everything correctly. There are no red lines or anything that you would sometimes see here if the response was done incorrectly. So as you can see, everything is working as we would expect. So that's it for this series pretty much. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite a lot longer than I expected, but we've gone over a complicated topic and hopefully you understand it well. And we've also implemented our own DNS server, which is um, something that's usually quite difficult to do. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.